Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny, and this is the Haves and the Have Not, Season 5, Episode 15, and the name of this episode is A Woman Under the Stairs. Let's just say this episode started with a bang, and it ended with a bang. So, let me get started. Um, the episode picks up where it left off. Veronica and Justin are, you know, pretty much Veronica is literally coming up from under the stairs, and she approaches Justin so you're married and he's like um miss harrington he's like yeah so again so you're married and he's like yeah and she's like hmm and then she starts asking him questions about his relationship with jeffrey how do they meet and all of this shit and you know first he's like wondering why you keep asking me all these questions she says well i'm actually trying to prepare you for when you're on the stand you know, and he's like, well, why would I be on the stand? And she says, well, mainly you will be on the stand because of you and your unnatural affections towards my son. So, I will pretty much, pretty much based off of what I've heard and everything that transpired between the two of you before I came up here, um, I'm pretty much going to charge, I'm pretty much going to, I'm pretty much going to build a case around around you sexually harassing my son so he's like what the hell are you talking about and and she's like look I heard everything and then all of a sudden he starts getting, getting then next thing you know we see that Justin starts getting really hostile towards her she's like oh whoa 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 that's strike two because right now you're getting nice Veronica see the second Veronica is a the second Veronica is a heart stopper. So I'm only gonna tell you this one last time. Stay the hell away from my son. I mean or, you know, I will pretty much charge you with sexual harassment and not only will I tell the press, I will also tell your boss as well as your wife. Um, and he says, like, in the times we're living in, you know, after what happened with um, Philando Castile, you know, the environment is hot to take down policemen. And it will be crazy that you get taken down for the fact that you abused your position and decided to have a sexual relationship with my son. So then, he, so then we see that Justin starts flexing his muscles like, you know my wife's a judge, right? And she's a judge in your case. So you don't want to come for me. You don't know what I'm capable of. So he does have a point, though, because little do we know about Justin. We do know that Justin does have, uh, um, he pretty much has like a family history within the police department. You know, his uncle, I think, is the chief of police. His father was a cop. So, pretty much, he has, like, this dynasty within the police department. So, he got people on his end that he can use to manipulate shit, too. And he's kind of letting Veronica know that, that, look, you met your match. You know, I ain't just going to walk away. She said that, first of all, are you threatening me? You know, because threatening me will be dangerous. You know, and she's like, nothing scares me. And then he kind of puts, like, um, his little, like, club. I think it was, like, a club that hurts, like, so what scares you? And she says, nothing. And no damn body. And he's like, he's like, he's like, who are you? And she's like, where you been, girl? I'm Veronica Harrington. <laughs> I'm like, Veronica is such a messy bitch. But I, I'm so here for it, though. She's a trip. And she's like... And she's like, you know... So, due to the fact that you have now mentioned to me that your wife is a judge, you've just practically given me more ammunition. So now I'm going to go down to the... Um, to the courts and say that can I actually ask for another judge involving my case because her husband is having an affair with my son I mean just imagine you know your your ego and your madness is going to do nothing but make me drag you out the closet 
I was like, ooh. And Justin was just getting madder and madder. And then she dropped the bomb and was like, well, I hate to tell you this, but you're not the first. I mean, he was in, he is in love with Wyatt, and he still is. I mean, him and Wyatt have been friends ever since they were kids. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, his ass walked up. She's like, what's wrong? You know, why you don't want to hear about it, honey? <laughs> you are such a mess. Oh, man, that part was so hilarious to me because she really got to him because she knows that he's in love with Wyatt, and we all know that, too, but the fact that she kind of brought it up to Justin again because she knows that, that Justin is is um is jealous of um of Wyatt and, um, and Jeffrey's friendship. So the fact that she brought that up again and kind of threw it up in his face was hilarious, and he just walked off. She's like, why are you leaving? You don't want to hear about it, honey. <laughs> I'm like, Veronica is something else, y'all. She really is. Next, we have a scene with um, with Jeffrey, David, and Jim. Um, they finally run into Jeffrey. You know, Jim is irate because he wants to know where his son is. Jeffrey tells him that he's fine. He's okay. He's like, where is he? And he's like, I don't think you seeing him right now is a good idea. And, of course, Jim gets irate. He goes off. And it's like, like first of all, you're not his doctor, Jeffrey. He is not your client, Jeffrey. I'm his father, and I have the right to know where my son is, so you need to tell me where he is. And then David's like, look, you need to tell him where his son is. Like, look, it's his father, it's his son. You should let him know what's going on. And then he's telling, he's kind of, and Jeffrey's trying to um, tell Jim that, look, you're like a trigger for him, which is why I'm trying, and right now he's at a fragile state, so I don't want him to be exposed to you at this time. But eventually he he calms down and he's like, look, Jeffrey, I have not seen my son in a long time. I'm worried about him. I need to at least see him just to know that he's breathing. You know, I don't mean to be mad at you or to go off on you, but I really need to see my son. So Jeffrey finally tells him where, um, where Wyatt is and he goes off. And then next thing you know, Jim... Next, you know, David and Jeffrey have a conversation, and he put and Jeff and David lets him know that look, that's his son, and you have to just let them. You just have to let, you know, you you got to let them deal with their situation. I know you meant well, but that's still his that, but that's still his father. And I'm like, yeah, we already know how David defends Jim at every turn, but um. He, but then he asked him, so then Jeffrey, so then, um, I'm sorry, so then David starts asking Jeffrey, you know, what do I hear, what do I, what do I hear about you being involved in Quincy's murder? And Jeffrey slowly but surely lets him know all that happened, that he walked in, he saw Quincy beating Candace, he jumps in to help the helper, then he beats him up, and then he said he just, he got mad, and he lost it, and one thing led to another. He was on the ground bleeding out. So, and then he pretty much, you know, asked, does your mother know about this? And he said, and Jeffrey told him, yeah. And he's like, oh, shit. It's like, why didn't you come to me? Why didn't you tell me about this? And he's like, why did you go to your mother? And he's like, I didn't go to my mother. She found out. I don't know how. We know how. She found out because of Marquita Maxwell. Marquita started telling her all this shit, and she went over there with some luminol, and she sprayed it around the whole, um, you know, in front of Candace's living room, and then when she turned the lights off, the place lit up like a Christmas tree. So that's how Veronica knew about it, because she knew about it through Marquita. And, and then, you know, he, he pretty much uh, says that, look, you should have let. You should have told me. He's like, well, Dad, I didn't want to get you involved. And he's like, look, you're my son. I'm already involved, but I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna help you. And he's like, look, you you're not gonna go back home to her house. You need to go back to your apartment. She's like, don't you re don't you remember she moved me out of the apartment? I'm living in her house now. He's like, okay, well, won't you get a hotel and get a room, and we'll work from from there. But I'm gonna get you out of this. Don't even worry about it. 
So now it's going to be Veronica versus David. So this is going to be an interesting fight because both of them got some shit with them. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to go to war off of um, Jeffrey's well-being. So this, so this is going to be uh, an interesting situation. All right. Next, we actually see that Jim finally finds the room. Anna is sitting in there with Wyatt. Wyatt is sleeping. You know, he kind of at first gets kind of irate with her because he asks for some alone time with Wyatt, and she says, I don't think it's a good idea. And she's like, look, he's my son. I haven't seen him in a while. I just, want, I just need a moment to talk to him and a moment. But she's like, look, he's sleeping right now, and it's a good thing because... You know, I wouldn't want him to wake up and see you there. He's like, look, I, I understand. I will keep quiet. I just want to, I just want a moment with him. So she gives him a moment. He, what he does is that he wipes the sweat off of his, off of his forehead and he gives him a kiss and tells him that, you know, you can do this. But then the shock that, um, that Jim had was when Jeffrey told him that, you know, cause he had, cause he had thought that Jeffrey was the one that enrolled him in rehab and, and like, and pretty much Jeffrey's like, no, he enrolled himself. You know, he gave him the number and told him that whenever you're ready to make that move, just call him. And Wyatt was the one who finally made the move. So he's like, yeah, he really wants to be clean. He really wants to um wants to be wants to be sober. And after you know Jeffrey wipes his head, he tells him that you're gonna be all right. You can you you're gonna make it. You can you can do this. And he, afterwards, he talks to Anna. He gives her all of his information. He said to please keep in touch with me. Let me know what's going on with him, and let me know how. Um, and let me know, um, you know, ab let me know about, you know, his status. You know, of how he's how he's improving and how he's getting better. And he pretty much says that it's important to me because he's all that I have left in this world. Because he lost Amanda. Catherine left his ass, so the only person he has is his son. So that's going to be interesting, you know. And, I mean, it just really shows that Jim loves his kids. And he definitely loves his son. So that was that was good to see. Next we see Hannah and I'm Catherine. Hannah has finally taken a bath and everything, and but you can definitely tell she's still absent-minded. You know, she's been up all night. She hasn't really slept. Um, but then, like, you know, Catherine makes a comment that, you know, it's going to be okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not expecting, I don't have only, I don't have the answers or what to say to you right now. I just don't have the words. But all I know is that God can help. And, and Hannah was like, God. And, and, and like, Catherine's like, come on, Hannah. You know, you better than that. She's like, you tell you the truth, I don't know who I am right at this moment. You know, but then she says, I need to call Benny. So she gets her phone and calls Benny. Um, Mitch has his phone because, you know, Benny's down at the police station because the punk-ass cop decided to arrest him. Um, she talks to Mitch briefly. She asks for Benny, but she says that, you know, he says that Benny uh, went out, you know, but I'll let Benny know to call you once, um, once he gets back or whatever. Because remember, Benny said he doesn't want his mother to know that he got locked up. And we see that um, that um, Mitch actually finds the video game at the crime scene. And then you know she pretty much says that you know we need to I need to talk to Benny because we need to figure out how we're going to cover Quincy's funeral. But when Captain heard this, Captain says, "I got you." She said that uh, he didn't have any insurance, and I didn't have any insurance, so I don't even have the means to bury him. And she said that, I got you. Don't worry about that. I got you covered. You know, and she says that, look, you have been there for me and my family in ways that no one has been. So trust me. Let me do this for you. And then she was like, you know, you know, like, you know, like when they, um, when they're at, during, at the funeral home or whatever, they ask you questions in regards to, um, what's your favorite, um, 
you know, what, what was your what was your favorite color, whatever. It's like, how am I supposed to do that with a child? You know, what I don't know what kind of flowers my, my nephew liked, but she did say he loved toys and he, and he loved the color purple. So, so Hannah was like, okay, you're just going to have to make the decision for him. But then she's like, um, and then, so then she's like, you know what, Hannah, you need something to eat. And she's like, I'm not hungry. She's like, Hannah, you need to eat something. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm about to make you something. She's like, you about to cook? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, oh, I definitely ain't eating now. <laughs> I was like, dang, even do um, her hard times, Hannah does have a sense of humor. She's like, Catherine, you ain't never cook. Ain't no way in hell I'm eating nothing you make. So we saw that go down. Next, we actually, um, well, actually, I'm going to talk about um, Candace and Charles before, um, well, well, first, I'm going to talk about Benny. Benny's down at the precinct. They're still giving him the runaround. They're saying he's not arrested, but yet they have him completely, like, uh, they, they pretty much say that you're not arrested, but we, you're just here to ask our questions or whatever. She's like, well, if I'm not arrested, I'm about to get the hell up out of here. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Like, look, I'm not giving you no information. I'm not telling you nothing about my sister. And, you know, y'all can go to hell with all this bullshit. So I'm about to leave. And then next thing you know, we saw another agent comes in, and he pretty much says that, look, we want your DNA. And he's like, I'm not giving you my damn DNA. What the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, either you can give it to us or we'll take it. And then the next thing you know, he just, you know, the the, um, the cop's like, okay, you didn't, you didn't give us no choice. So he's like, and just so, the, so the officer that's there with him is like, you know, just be, just wait. He's like, you mean just wait? I ain't have no choice but wait. You won't let me leave. You just have me here. So we're going to get into that because, like, all of a sudden they, they want his DNA and then they told him that he's a threat to the national president. So how the hell is Benny involved in whatever situation with the national president? He has no idea. But then again, we begin to put the pieces together after the fact. First, we, so now I'm going to talk about Candace and Charles, you know, the future president. Candace is in her room. She pretty much hears these kids playing or whatever. Because remember, he said that he has two children. He has a boy and he has a girl. Um, think um, their names are um, Cecilia and Jack. And she opens the door, you know, the 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 joining door, and they open the door, and they immediately start talking to Candace, and they are uh, they immediately she immediately connects with the kids. And they're like, oh, my God, you're so pretty. And she's like, well, thank you. And, like, they're just going back and forth. And, you know, Charles comes up and tells them, like, you know, I'm just here, you know, spending time with my children before I send them off to school. Because right now they're in, um, they're, I think they're, like, they're in, um, he's enrolled them in school in town until, until they're able to go back home. Because, you know, right now he's on his campaign tour. So... He sends the kids off. Candace pretty much puts on her her boss chick, you know, demeanor, you know, still telling them what to do and all that. But Charles is starting to give a different kind of attitude, like where he's become more confident and become, like, cocky and very well assured of himself. And Candace is kind of picking up on it, like, when did you, get, when did you become so confident? When did you become so self-aware and he's like look you know you know I guess there's a lot more to me than, than you know so she pretty much you know commands for him to strip and he takes off his clothes and he was flexing the muscles too I was like okay boy Ooh, oh yes Mr. President uh, <laughs> you know forgive me y'all but anyway um he pretty much takes off his clothes they get in bed they do the, they do the wild thing then she takes a selfie, and it's like she's constantly saying that, you know, I'm not going to use it, but I like to have it for safekeeping. You never know. And he's like, you do realize that I'm about to be the youngest president of the United States, right? And you know that, you know, that my campaign is going strong. And she's like, yeah, I know all of this. You know, you know but the thing is, it's just... I, I just like having, I just want to have it for my safekeeping. You know, 
you never know when you when you need to you, you never know when you need to pull an ace or when you need to you know play your cards. I want to have cards to play with. And Charles is like, look, you really have no idea of who I am and what I'm capable of. Then the next thing you know, he pretty much calls out, Vincent, I need you. And she's like, who the hell is Vincent? Next thing you know, there's like a swarm of Secret Service men that storm into the room. Terrence is like, what the hell is going on here? And he pre and pretty much, um, they, they pretty much um, talked about, you know, well, according according to your records, um, you actually are a terrorist and, you know, you're a threat to national security. So we're going to take you in. And she's like shocked. Like literally her mouth is dropped because she's like, what the fuck? You know, what the hell? I'm being arrested for treason and for being a terrorist. And then all of a sudden, um, Charles is like, look at me, Candace. Look at me. You're under arrest. I'm not a motherfucker who's down for these games. And I was like, holy shit. So Charles is the one that pretty much is trying to take Candace down now. And to top it off, you know, he pretty much, he also got somebody sent to question Benny to get Benny's DNA. So I'm like, wow, this shit is crazy. And then we also saw from a clip from, from next week that, yeah, he knows all about her. See, Oscar tried to warn your ass, Candace, that you're in a different league and these people, you know, the people that's backing him, they want their candidate to win and you playing these games and shit. Yeah, they'll do. They'll they will do their homework to get rid of you, because you were there to set him up. But then you kind of got caught up, and you thought that you can take him by yourself. And now you realize you can't because he has a way bigger army and way bigger fish to fry than you do. So we're gonna see how Kansas is gonna spend this. But I just said that. Yeah, this this is crazy. Because Charles just really just showed that he grimy as hell. And, he, and that explains why he was so confident and well assured of himself that he was going to win. I'm the highest in the polls. The polls don't lie. I'm, I was like, wow. And then I also am waiting to see what's going to happen with Justin because Veronica got his number. But then again, Justin got, Justin got you know, um, he definitely has, you know, his powers on, on his end, so we're going to see how that's going to play out as well. But that's my review, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Like this video, comment this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back next week with the next episode of The Haves and the Have-Nots. So until then, everybody, take care.